Hey, week number 14, rivalry week. It is here. It is ready for your enjoyment. So, there's games all throughout the week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even tonight. Um, We'll talk about the NFL tomorrow. But, you know, let's start off here with some of these Friday games, first of all. Thursday game, there's a Thursday game, the Egg Bowl, but it doesn't matter because the Egg Bowl is not really, you know, uh, um, And there's some Mac games, but eh. But, yeah, Friday, first off, we got to talk about the Longhorns, you know, um, mostly because I have to um, for our sake. Just to improve our, well, not really improve our standing anymore. We have four losses in the Big 12. Uh, but we just need to beat Texas Tech to, you know, get a little solidarity. You know, we're having like a down year. All this talent, all this natural, all this natural skilled players playing down, playing like trash. And. You know, Texas Tech is not very good, so I hope that the Longhorns do win. But you never know. You never know what Tom Herman and, and Beck and, and Orlando as defensive coordinator. You never know. It's, it's just depressing right now to be a Texas fan. But there is some interesting stuff going on at the same time that I'll be watching, you know, my team's game. That is the ACC Coastal Division title race coming down to the number 23 currently, um, at least in the eyes of other voters. Now, of course, you know, these other polls don't matter. What matters is the poll on Tuesday. Uh, So it'll be Virginia Tech taking on Virginia, and that will be at 11 on Friday. It's going to be a good game. Uh, Iowa's taking on Nebraska. That'll also be, um, it'll be okay. You know, Iowa's offense is kind of slow, still, you know, in the in the in the nineteen uh, eighties. Um, but uh, really, the other game you should keep your eye on, aside from the coastal um, division title race wrapping up, is the AAC. Two ranked teams that have been ranked closely together for so long now. And that is Cincinnati and Memphis. Memphis has a high flying offense led by Brady White. Cincinnati um, Cincinnati has a great defense. You know, obviously, they only lost to Ohio State, who just bullied them 42 to nothing. But ever since then, they have racked off 10 straight wins. And this is going to be a good, good game. A good defense against a good offense. You know those types of games are going to be excellent. I am so ready for this matchup. It might be the only one that I watch at the two thirty one at the two thirty mark. Um, but you know there are some other games on Friday as well, like the Apple Cup or TC West Virginia. That's kind of just throw. They kind of just. You know, the Big 12 kind of just threw that together. Or, you know, Appalachian State being ranked to take on Troy at 5 o'clock on Friday. That's Central Time, by the way. Of course, you know, you got the um, the old UCF-USF game as the nightcap. Now, of course, that game does not matter at all. But if you want to see UCF, you know, beat the dog shit out of South Florida, you, know, you can watch that. Then we get to the Saturday slate. All the interesting stuff is here, you know. It's it's rivalry week, and it's going to be interesting to see what South Carolina can do against Clemson to start um, to start off the day. Um, I think that you know South Carolina, if they play like they did against Georgia, they have a chance to beat Clemson. Clemson has coasted through the entire ACC through all of their non-conference competition, and this one final game could be the deciding factor in the whether we see Clemson in the playoff or not. I don't know if the I don't know if the coastal champ, I don't know if it's gonna be Virginia Tech or Virginia, but whoever it is, I don't know if they have a chance against Clemson. South Carolina, 
you have to do it for us. Um, we'll skip around the game for a moment to talk about Georgia, Georgia Tech, clean, old-fashioned hate. Now, Georgia Tech has looked awful all season, but they can get that they can do something. They can do anything against Georgia, then they have a chance. Georgia's defense is crazy good. Their offense, not so much. They've only scored, you know, they haven't really scored a lot of points. Jake Fromm has not looked very good. You know, DeAndre Swift has been okay, you know. And, they, you know, Georgia has other weapons, but has other wide receiver weapons, but eh, they don't really move the needle for me. Um, but Georgia Tech can do what they need to do, and, you know, they get enough stops. They can beat Georgia. They can do, they, they can do it. And as we move on down here, I don't know if I will be here at at this time at this time for it, but I do know that Wisconsin and Minnesota are scoring off the Big Ten West title. Wisconsin does not look the greatest. And Minnesota obviously, you know, had one bad game against Iowa inside Kinnick Stadium and they lost it. So um but this game is going to be very, very interesting. I'm probably going to be here because UNT is trash this year, and you know, there's no point in going to the final four game. So this team is awful. But Wisconsin has to raid in Minnesota's offense. That offense can throw. This game might. This game probably is going to be over in two and a half hours. I guarantee you, because of the way the offense is run. Um, both are slow, methodical, and when when you give them, when you give in the big plays, you know there's going to be some big plays this game. I guarantee you, Jonathan Taylor would run all over Minnesota's defense if they don't have it. Minnesota could throw it all over them. I forgot their quarterback's name, but they could throw it all over the field. They have some weapons out there, you know. And Baylor's taking on Kansas. So, you know, say what you will there. And Rutgers is taking on Penn State. Say what you will there. Both of those will probably be blowouts. Uh, Notre Dame is also taking on Stanford at three. Um, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Notre Dame is completely out of the playoff race at this point. Does not matter. Uh, but this game does, however. The Iron Bowl, it always has playoff implications attached to it. And this year will be no different. Auburn has not looked the greatest. They have three three losses that really, really were kind of, at times, was just like, oh, yeah, th- this is a bad loss. They lost to Florida. They lost to LSU. They lost to Georgia. And... The key for Auburn is Bo Nix. They got to get this guy to do something, anything against Alabama. Alabama has Mac Jones. There's no Tua Takabailoa in this game. Maybe Taluia. Um, or however, you, however you say his younger brother's name, but younger Tua. We'll just call him younger Tua for now. But if he gets in the game, you know, it could be interesting as well. Um, but that's only if like Auburn's like getting blown out. I don't think this will happen. I think Alabama, you know, they're finally playing someone that has, you know, a pulse. Arkansas and and, 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 and Western Carolina do not count as teams to pulse, or out of Mississippi State, I mean, too. Um, but Alabama, if they lose this game, they are completely out. They are. No two-loss team is getting into the playoff right now. Uh, you have to have a lot of things working in your favor for a two-loss team to get to the playoff. It's just not going to happen this year, I don't think. But all Auburn has to do is get Bo Nix together and get him get him moving with the ball and everything like that smoothly, efficiently, and everything like, you know, just has to get this to the playmakers, has to get Auburn's offense running smoothly. Um yeah, moving on here, we still is Oregon still right, but they're taking on an Oregon State team that is actually quite good. Who would have thought? Now they did get now Oregon State did get blown out by Oklahoma State at the beginning of the season, but 
Oregon State's really improved, really improved as a team. I think they're bowl eligible. Because they have, they have four losses, at, at, in my estimation. But this Oregon State team looks really, really good. And Oregon has a tough, tough task ahead of them. Now, the grueling nine-game schedule of the Pac-12 shows no mercy to anyone. If Oregon drops another game, that'll be, you know, even more of a bad stench on Utah's record. We'll talk about Utah in a moment because they're going to be the nightcap game for once. Um, but Oregon, Justin Herbert has to play a lot better. He did not play very good when when he when he threw those interceptions against Arizona State. He did not look great. He just didn't look great at all in that game. Not great at all. Uh, moving on down here, we got Navy taking on Houston. Houston is just absolutely terrible this year. They have not looked like the Houston under Tom Herman. Um, but, you know, Navy should get the victory here. This game is at six. You know, same thing with the A&L LSU game, which is, which has now become a little bit infamous around here because of, um, you know, the five, seven overtime game, I think, that happened last year. And, and if you do something like that again, you know, they, they could beat LSU. You know, take them all the way to overtime. I can't remember if the a m won last year or not, but um because it was last year. Um, but yeah, LSU's offense is looking mighty, mighty good. LSU's defense, on the other hand, if AM can exploit that and keep LSU off the field, because they have a pretty good defense themselves. Then A and M could actually get the upset. I guarantee you, A and M could get an upset victory here. Who knows? I certainly don't. Florida State in Florida. Florida State's not looked the greatest, considering they've already fired Willie Taggart. Um, but you know, Florida, they're just kind of there. You know, they have two losses. They're out of the playoff picture for realsies. There's no way. There's no possible, peaceful way, a lot of chaos has to happen for Florida to get in, and I don't, I just don't think it's going to happen, so, but if they beat Florida State, you know, it really doesn't do anything for them at all. Oh, oh, sorry. Before we get into that, um, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like that's about it. Uh, Boise State is taking on Colorado State Friday as well, so keep that in mind. But as far as the end of Saturday, the two games that you should keep your eye on the most. First of all, the game that I'm going to keep my eye on the most is Bedlam. Bedlam, Bedlam, Bedlam. Jalen Hurts has not looked the greatest for about the for about this entire month at the very least. Maybe since the Texas game, but he hasn't looked very good. The offense hasn't looked great. C.D. Lamb hasn't, you know, hasn't really been doing much ever since he got injured. Yeah, the running game's still there. Yeah, Oklahoma can run the ball up and down the field like it's nobody's business. But the passing game, uh, uh. and Oklahoma State is reeling. They got a couple injuries on offense, but Chupa Hubbard, baby, Chupa Hubbard. If Chuba Hubbard can run all over this Oklahoma defense, I guarantee you that there's going to be something good coming out of this game. Now, Oklahoma needs a victory. They need a victory. They'll have another ranked opponent if they beat Oklahoma State on, on their resume. Obviously, they can't beat Kansas State anymore. They can't beat Kansas State again because Kansas State's not going to the Big 12 championships, so that would rectify all of that. But if Oklahoma can beat. Oklahoma State, you know, good. It'll be good. It'll be good for the Big 12, for the hopes of the two teams that are left in the race. And I still consider Baylor to be a part of the Big 12 race to the playoff, at the very least. But if Oklahoma loses the game, they are out. And Oklahoma has not shown the signs to where they could win this game easily. It might be another struggle. Oklahoma might lose this like they should have a couple weeks ago and last week as well, maybe. You never know with Gary Patterson. He's the, but that's That was last week. But this week, you know, Oklahoma has to do better. If they don't do better, 
I guarantee you Oklahoma State can do something about it. And finally, lastly, Colorado at Utah. The spotlight game for ABC on Saturday night will be the Utes, baby. The Utes of Utah and Colorado. It is going to be interesting to see what Colorado could put up against this balanced offense, dominant defense of Utah. I have not seen a Colorado game in a while, so I don't know what in the world is going to happen with this game. But if Colorado could do something to upset the balance of Tyler Huntley and Zach Moss, then they've got a chance in this game. There is a chance that Utah season that could be completely ruined by the results of this game. And then that could ruin the Pac-12's hopes as well. And, oh, and that would open up the door for some other teams, obviously. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what in the world happens here. <clears throat> Can Colorado do something? Will Utah dominate this game again? I don't know. I don't know yet. But, you know, um, it's going to be interesting to see because Utah has a lot playing for them here. They have a lot to win for because Utah needs to win this game to win the Pac-12 South. If they don't win this game and, and lose it, USC will be taking on Oregon in the Pac-12 championship. So, Colorado, can you, can you get the victory when it counts? Utah, can you, can you keep the momentum going? We'll find out on Saturday. We will find out on Friday and Saturday what in the world is going to happen. And, of course, there's conference championships again. Like I've said, Hawaii, Boise State will be um, will be a conference championship game that takes place. Um, Ohio State's taking on somebody. Georgia and LSU, they're already locked in. Um, Baylor, Oklahoma, that, that's already locked in. That's probably going to be 12 o'clock. We'll preview the conference championships when we get there. And then, of course, you know, Army, Navy will be somewhere. And, of course, there's also a bowl game that's already been announced completely. Um, BYU is going to Hawaii Bowl, so you know, I think I already talked about that, but that's good for them. But, yeah, uh, we'll talk about the conference championships next week as well. Maybe, but of course, we'll talk about Army, Navy the week after that. But it's going to do it, y'all. We're going to saddle it up and try and go do something else you know take care see y'all and you know we'll talk again in a few peace